Welcome today to the King James Bible Hour. I'm your host, Pastor Mark Anderson. I'm with King James Bible Church. We are located at 920 Tram Road, Mount Olive, North Carolina. We are so glad to have you join us today. We would like to invite you, if you do not have a church home, especially if you do not have a church home that is preaching the word of truth contained in the King James Bible, we want to invite you to come out and join us. We have Sunday school on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., uh, followed by a worship hour at 11 a.m., and we also have Sunday night worship at 6 p.m., as well as a Tuesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. So if you don't have a church home, we invite you to come out and join us for a time of worship and study of God's Word. Today we're going to be talking about a subject that is probably going to be one of the more controversial subjects that I have tackled and that I have had to deal with in the church. It is concerning a uh, topic that is plaguing the body of Christ today in record numbers. There are people coming out of the woodworks claiming to hold this office as a title concerning apostles. Uh, many are running around today claiming to be apostles of Jesus Christ, apostles of the Lord. You'll see them running around and introducing themselves as apostle so-and-so. In fact, uh, many uh, of the women in the ministry today have jumped on the bandwagon, and they too are now claiming to be apostles. Uh, none of this stuff is scripturally sound, and none of this stuff is biblically correct. Um, I'm going to show you today out of the Word of God why none of these men, and especially none of these women that are claiming to be apostles, are being truthful, but rather are deceitful workers who are lying to you. That's right. Pastor Mark Anderson calls them liars. And the reason I call them liars is because the Word of God calls them a liar. Revelation chapter 2 verse 2 says, You have tried them that claim to be apostles, and you have found them to be liars. There are some things that the Word of God gives us that we can use to try out a man and see whether they are truly holding to the office of an apostle. There are some distinctive things that are required in order for a man to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to show you that this morning or this evening in the readings of God's Word. First of all, let's get a little uh, foundation built here by going to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verses 12. We'll start right there. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 12. The Bible says this. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Now, in this passage here, Paul lets us know that there is coming a time when these false apostles and deceitful workers, they are able to transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. They'll say all the right words. They'll say all the right, the right lingo to make you think that they are who they claim to be. But Paul warns us a very clearly in this passage that Satan himself is able to transform himself into an angel of light. And why should it be any surprise then that his ministers, and they are Satan's ministers, every single one of them, from the first to the last, that claims to be an apostle, claims to be something that God never called them to be, are ministers of Satan. They are deceived themselves, and they are running around deceiving other people in the body of Christ, and the poor beguiling souls that are being deceived haven't picked up a King James Bible in 40 years, so they have no clue what's going on around them, much less realizing what Satan is doing in their midst. He's deceiving them, and he's deceiving them with ministers that have transformed themselves into 
apostles of Jesus Christ. But it doesn't change the fact that they're ministers of Satan. And I'm here today as a minister of righteousness to expose this heresy and expose this false doctrine that is filtrating into the body of Christ and doing more damage to the Christians than uh, many other doctrines that are running around under the guise of Christianity. Now, I'm going to show you today. There are some distinctive things that identify a person to be required to be a true apostle. There's three things required. Number one, they had, now listen carefully. Don't you get mad with me. You better get you a King James Bible and pick it up and open that book and read these scriptures that I'm going to give you real carefully and pray about them for about three hours and let God talk to you instead of some false prophet running around trying to deceive you and get your wallet. Now, that's what you need to do. You need to get the Word of God out, kick the dust off of it, and let the Holy Spirit talk to you for a change instead of some deceiver that's sitting up on TV claiming to be something that he never was. And God never called him to be. Number one, they had to be an eyewitness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ in his glorified body. Now let me read that one more time. Just make sure that you got it. You better write this down. They had to be an eyewitness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ in his glorified body. 1 John chapter 1 and verses 1 and 2. Let's look and see what the word of God says. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. John the Apostle is telling these fellow believers here that he has heard and seen and handled the word of life and this life was manifested and he's seen it and he declared it and he bears witness to it. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is what he's referring to. You read that over and over again and you won't get anything outside of it other than what I just told you. It is the resurrection of Jesus Christ that's being referred to and he's bearing witness to it. He wrote it down in a book and he's bearing witness to it and that witness is still here today in 1 John. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. In verse 1, the Bible says, Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? Paul the apostle, in defending his apostleship to the Corinthians, one of the questions that he asked, and he's asked this over and over again, or he, he states this over and over again throughout the scriptures. He says, I have seen Jesus Christ our Lord. Now the Apostle Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. God called him out of due season to be a witness and a testimony to the Gentiles of the grace of God. He saw Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. You'll find that in Acts chapter 9 and reiterated in Acts chapter 22. But the fact is, my friend, that the Apostle Paul had an appearance of Jesus Christ in his resurrected body, the glorified body that came up out of that grave, and that body appeared to him and talked to him and showed him some things and got him and chose him to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Now that's why he says, Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Why these Lying deceivers today, they couldn't tell you when they've seen Jesus Christ their Lord. If they're honest, they'll tell you that they've never seen him. Why, they sit here and talk to you and deceive you and talk to you about some vision they had in some back room somewhere. But have they seen Jesus Christ the Lord from heaven? They certainly have not. Jesus Christ has not appeared to them in such a manner. 
He only did it in the New Testament with the apostles, and he did it with the last apostle being Paul himself. As he testified to it, he said, he appeared to me last. And we're going to look at that in a little bit. All right, the next scripture we're going to look at is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verses 7 through 8. The Bible says, and after that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And look at verse 8. And last of all, you better underline that, my friend. Last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. But I want you to notice in verse 8, Paul made a very, very profound statement. Jesus Christ had appeared to him last. He was the last one to see Jesus Christ in his resurrected body. He was the last one that Jesus Christ appeared to and chose him as an apostle. Paul was the last person to be chosen as an apostle of Jesus Christ, and there was none chosen after him. You can search the scriptures from front to back, top to bottom, in the middle, around the side, and up in one side corners, and you'll never find another apostle chosen after Paul. Not one time. Paul said he was seen last of all by him. And he was chosen last of all by him. And you better notice that. And he says as of one born out of due, see, uh, due time, the reason he said that was because Paul was born out of time because he wasn't here walking on the earth when Jesus Christ and the other apostles were. God had to do something special in Paul's situation when he was choosing him to be an apostle. He had to come back here and appear to him on this earth and show him that he was the Lord. You can read that in Acts chapter 9. Go home and read it carefully about ten times. God will show it to you if you pray about it. Instead of chasing some liar running around trying to get your money. Alright, the next thing that we're going to look at is, number two, they had to be appointed by Jesus Christ himself. Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, we find this. Verses 21 through 22. Wherefore, of these men, which have company with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Did you see that? You couldn't be an apostle unless you had witnessed the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, has any of these... Uh, self-appointed apostles running around today telling you that they're an apostle of Jesus Christ and they're apostles so and so. Has any one of them seen the resurrected Jesus Christ? I doubt it. I doubt it. And they'll tell you they haven't if they're honest, which most of them are not. they rather get your money instead of being truthful before God, instead of being honest about it and being honest about His Word. Galatians chapter 2, verse 8. Galatians chapter 2, verse 8. You say, why are you being so mean to these people? Well, I'll tell you why. I'm tired of men running around, and by the way, women as well, running around perverting the word of God, trying to deceive you and to following them and switch your authority from the Bible to them. Most of these men run around, teach you things that is totally contrary to the word of God, borderline of witchcraft and that's what they're doing and yeah I have a problem with that as a child of God and as a minister of God because I'm trying to preach something that is sound and true and right and these men are coming behind and perverting those words that I'm preaching and perverting the words of God in this book 
and deceiving souls and sending them straight to hell. Yeah, I've got a problem with that. I've called of God to be a preacher of the gospel, to warn you of the judgment of God and warn you not to add to his word nor take away from it. And these men are perverting those words. Trying to get people in, uh, to come running after them. And why? The love of money. The love of money. Alright, Galatians chapter 2 verse 8. The Bible says, For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. In other words, Paul is saying here that Jesus Christ that appointed Peter to work in the Jewish community and work with them and win them to Christ also chose him and worked with him in the uh, ministry to the Gentiles. Now, if you'll look over here in verse 11, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel, look at chapter 1 and verse 11, but I certify to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it by, by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, now, Paul the Apostle is telling you something here. Look at verse 16. To reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, that immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. Now listen, God is telling you in these passages of Scripture that the Apostle Paul, look at verse 1, Paul an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and of God the Father who raised him from the dead, he has been chosen by Jesus Christ himself to be an apostle. And the other twelve that you saw mentioned in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and found again in the book of Acts doing the work of the ministry, were chosen directly by Jesus Christ to do the work of the ministry. Paul the apostle was no exception. The only difference between Paul and the rest of them was Paul had to be met on the road to Damascus after the resurrection, after Jesus had went back to heaven, he came back down, he appeared to him, he gave him the message, he gave him the gospel to go preach, he revealed it to him, he taught him by revelation, and gave it to him, and he wrote it in a book, and you and I have it available to us today because we're reading it right here in the book of Galatians. So, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Did they... Um, these men that are running around claiming to be apostles, the first thing you need to ask them is, did they see the resurrected Christ in his glorified body and then watch them get nervous? I've cornered these snakes before and asked them, and they'll tell you everything but the truth. They'll claim to you, oh, yes, I saw him in the back room somewhere in a vision. Well, God appeared to me in a dream. Well, God appeared to me on the back side of a corner somewhere. And let me tell you something. I ask you, did you see the resurrected Jesus Christ in his glorified body? And you either can say yes or no. And if you're honest, you'll say no. And if you're even more honest, you'll stop using a title that don't belong to you. Now, they had to be appointed by Jesus Christ himself. Galatians chapter 1, I showed you that in verses 11 through 12. Verses 11 through 12, it says it came by revelation. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Let's go there real quick. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he's an apostle. He was appointed by Jesus Christ himself. Praise God. Most of these men are self-appoints. What do I mean by that? They decided one day that it would be cool to use a title other than what God told them to use. And they want to run around and use something that has no application to them whatsoever. So they pervert the scriptures to twist them to make them look like they're saying something that they're not. And then use them to deceive you. 
And not one of these men, if they're honest, will be able to say that Jesus appeared and chose him to be an apostle. That's if they're honest. Number three, watch this. They had to be able to demonstrate the signs of an apostle. All right. Second Corinthians chapter 12. It gets even better. God narrows it right on down to where you couldn't miss it if you tried. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Truly the signs of an apostle were, writ, were wrought among you in all patience in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Now let me say this. These men running around here claiming to be apostles couldn't produce the signs of an apostle if their life depended on it. They couldn't do it. They could not produce the signs of an apostle. These signs are found in Mark chapter 16. But we're going to get there in a minute. Let's go. Well, actually, let's look at it real quick. Mark chapter 16. You want to know what the signs are? The Bible does give you the signs right here in Mark chapter 16. And this is another one of those passages that the charismatics have perverted and tried to make, it th make you think that these are signs that follow everybody that is born again. Now, here's what it says. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, who's the them? The them is um, found over here. In verse 12, and after he appeared in another form and the two of them, as they walked and went into the country, and they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward he appeared to the leaven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. He said unto them, Go in all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them, a specific group of people that he's referring to here, and it's the apostles. He said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, that's the apostles, he was received up into heaven and sat down on the right hand of God. And they, that's the apostles, went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, that's the apostles, and confirming the word with signs following. Now, that took place in the book of Acts. And if you'll go to the book of Acts, you'll notice that the book of Acts is called the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. Most of your Bibles have that at the very beginning as the title of the book. The Acts of the Apostles. Okay? And that picks up right there in Acts chapter 1. And you'll find that the signs, the signs that were mentioned in Mark 16 start showing up in the book of Acts and go all the way through the book of Acts till about Acts chapter 28. Alright? Now, let's move on a little further. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and verse 12. Here's another one. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth, look at verse 12, but what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory they may be found even as we. We read this earlier. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. In Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, and verse 2 and 3, Here's what the Bible says. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear with them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say, notice the word, they are apostles and are not 
and has found them liars, and has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. These men were able to try these men to determine whether they were really apostles or not. And the way they did it was they took the scriptures and looked at what they were doing and compared it to the scriptures. And if it didn't line up, they cast them out and called them liars. Now, ask these modern self-appoints to go with you to the local hospital and clean out the cancer wards and go to the burn units and demonstrate the apostolic signs. They will run like a fox with his tail on fire. You know why? Because they couldn't produce an apostolic sign if their life depended on it. And I make no apologies for that. It's the truth. These men are running around claiming to be something and don't even have the signs to back them up. Never mind something that they claimed that they did in the back room somewhere where nobody was watching. I've sat around these churches long enough to see these so-called signs. The only thing they can produce is a bunch of people in the altar claiming to be talking in tongues. And when you record the messages that they're claiming to be speaking, there ain't no language in the world that can be identified with it. Ain't that something? And besides that, they're doing that out of order, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now, their writings, talking about the apostles, were considered authoritative and accepted as scriptures, which were included in the final canon. This is in addition to the three things that are required to be an apostle. The fourth thing is, they were, their writings were considered authoritative and accepted as scriptures, which were included in the final canon. They were able to write under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, and as a result, these writings were scriptures. Now, can these men do that today? Can they literally write books and write letters and turn around and quote them as scriptures? The apostles in the Bible did. The apostle Paul did. The apostle Peter did. The apostle John did. The Apostle Matthew did. What's wrong with these men? Why can't they write scriptures? I'll tell you why they can't. Because they're frauds. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. The Bible says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which ye heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as is in truth, as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. You know what the Apostle Paul was there saying? The things that we were writing to you were the word of God, and you received it as such, as it really is the word of God and not the word of men. Now, can these liars write that today and say that about themselves and say that about their own writings? I doubt it. I doubt it very seriously. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 through 16. The Bible says, An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. The Apostle Peter calls Paul's writings scriptures. Isn't that interesting? He calls them scriptures. Now, you take Rick Joyner, Todd Bentley, Kenneth Copeland, or any of these other self-appoints out here that run around calling themselves apostles, Rodney Brown, and all that crowd out there at TBN, and ask them, have they ever wrote a letter, have they ever wrote a book that they could turn around and quote as scripture? And the answer is no, my friend, they can't. You know why? Because they're deceivers. You know why? Because they're frauds. They're not true. They're not genuine. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 37. 
The Bible says, If any man think himself to be a prophet or a spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write... <laughs> have you wrote anything lately, Uncle Todd? Have you wrote anything lately, Dr. Rick? And turned around and said that it was the Scriptures? I doubt it. And even if you did, you'd be a liar. And God would call you a liar as well as this preacher right now calling you a liar. I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Now, that's what Paul said. And you're not on the same level as Paul. You know why? Because he was an apostle and you're not. Praise the Lord. Now, let's move right along. Ask to make believe apostle which book in the Bible did they write? Sorry, we're not in today. Leave a message. We'll get back to you next week. <laughs> the apostles had no successors to replace them. That's very important. There is one exception to this, and that was the replacement of Judas Iscariot in Acts chapter 1, verses 15 through 26. Matthias was a temporary replacement chosen by the eleven by casting lots until Paul the apostle converted to the faith. Paul, not Matthias, was chosen by the Lord himself to replace Judas Iscariot permanently. You'll find that in Acts chapter 9, verses 15 through 16, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verse 8. And note two things here in this passage. He says he was the last. I want to emphasize that, folks, because people read that every day and miss it. He said he was the last one to see the risen Christ and that he was born out of due time. This is the only time a replacement is recorded in the scriptures. When James is martyred for the faith, there is no replacement given for him in Acts chapter 12, verse 2. But these false apostles didn't even bother looking at the passage or looking at the book of Acts to see that that was the case. And if they had been pointed it out, they wouldn't care anyway. Because they've got some other lame excuse on why they can still run around and claim to be what they're not. The term 12 does not occur in the book of Acts after this event to refer to the apostles showing again there was no replacement. Apostolic succession is a Roman Catholic invention and a form of this is now being taught by the modern charismatic movement when it comes to apostles being an office in the church today. I want you to note one more thing. Jude 17. Let's look at it. Jude 17. In Jude 17, we read the following thing. Verse 17. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jude. Notice how Jude refers to the apostles in the past tense and not in the present tense. In Revelation 21, 14, notice also that the foundation of the city is built on the twelve apostles of the Lamb, not more than that, showing us that Paul was the true replacement of Judas Iscariot, and that the office ceased after the apostle John's death, who wrote the last book in your Bible called the book of Revelation. Now, you better note that and pay attention to the little details that mean a lot in the scriptures. These men, as far as Jude was concerned, were a past tense situation. There was no more current apostles other than the one that was sitting there writing the book of Revelation, and that was John the Apostle. There was no succession after these men died. And only the succession that you'll find is found later in the Roman Catholic hierarchy when they developed a church system that was counterfeit to the true church that Jesus Christ founded. And one more final thing that I want you to notice about the apostles in the New Testament compared to these make-believes that are running around today. Not one case. You can go from Genesis to Revelation. You can go from top to bottom, front to back. Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, as well as the English text of the King James Bible. And there is not one case in the Bible found where a woman was operating in the office of the apostle, and there was not one Gentile in the bunch 
not from front to back, top to bottom. It doesn't matter which way you go, which way you read. There was not one male apostle that was a Gentile, and there was not one single female apostle in the whole bunch. You can read Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 through 4, and see this borne out. And the Bible tells us that the oracles of God, which would be the scriptures, were given to the Jews, not the Gentiles, meaning that it was Jews, Jewish males, that wrote the scriptures. And you can find that and picking up a King James Bible and looking at each book in that Bible, and you'll find out that there was only one type of group that wrote these books, and that was Jewish males, and they were appointed by God himself to write the books that you have today. Romans chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. Now, this is my closing remarks on the subject of apostles in the church today. The apostles that were given in the New Testament were given for a specific period of time. They were given for a specific purpose. They were to lay the foundation of the church. They were put here to lay the foundation of the church. And after that foundation had been laid, and after the scriptures had been written, the office ceased because the office was not needed any longer. You'll find that in the book of Ephesians. In the book of Ephesians. Chapter, let's see, let's see, in chapter 4, if you'll look at chapter 4 and verse 11, I'll point this out to you. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, the church became uh, all these things, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 10, when the King James Bible was written and completed, you'll find that the church was given everything it needed to become a perfect man in the Scriptures. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11, we see that he gave some apostles. Did you notice that? It says some. All right. Now, you better note that. Praise God. And there's another thing. It's a foundational thing that was given for the apostles. The Bible says that they were the foundation. You can read that in the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, you'll find that the foundation of the city is laid on the apostles. And there's another scripture here that talks about the foundation uh, being that of the apostles, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. And I'll show you that in just a second if I can find it. Hold on just a minute. Let's see. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. And the Bible says this. Now, you are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. So now the apostles were the foundation. That was their purpose. They built the foundation of the church, and once that foundation was built, there was no longer needed this office in the church. They gave us the foundation through the Holy Scriptures. Once the canon of the Scriptures was closed, the office of the apostle ceased, as well as did the office of the prophet, because these things were no longer needed, because we have a perfect book now called the Bible. And this is our guide, and this is what God the Spirit points to. The Bible says when he... The Spirit of truth has come. He will, lead, he will guide you into all truth. Jesus Christ said, Thy word is truth. And if you don't want to hear the truth, that's because you don't read the Bible. Because the Bible is the truth and the Holy Spirit points you to it. God bless you. And I hope you have a great day. Until, again, until we meet again next time. God bless you. If you enjoyed this message, please write to us at King James Bible Church. Post Office Box 297. Mount Island, North Carolina, 28365. God bless. Amen.